Tonight is the first time to be at the Los Angeles Film Festival after a nice evening at uh, Bet Jacob last night. And uh, uh, before I go back to Israel, uh, I'll be at the Holocaust Museum, Los Angeles Holocaust Museum, for a sold out showing over there. And it's the tail end of uh, this road show, which started in Chicago, Boston, Columbus, Ohio, and uh, New York, Long Island, Great Neck, New Jersey, and uh, I'm glad to be out here before I go back home. What's it like? Okay. What is it like to come here and see how many people know you? Wait a second. Danny. Do you, do you have a lot of friends in America? I have family in America. I got friends in America. I got uh, guys that are playing, uh, in, that played in the NBA in the same college all-star team. And I got uh, the son of uh, Bill Walton and I that played in the United States team in the World Championships in 1970. Uh, Luke Walton that's here in Los Angeles coaching now the Lakers. Wow. And yes, of course, uh, a lot of friends here. So this, this particular movie, on the map. They use your phrase. How did this phrase come about? The phrase came out of the excitement after the game that we beat the Soviet Union team, which beat the United States team in that controversial game in the 72 Olympics. And we won 91-79 in a game that nobody thought that we could ever even have a chance, especially the Russian team. The Soviet team never thought that they could uh, lose to us. And out of that excitement, uh, everybody just poured onto the floor after the game. And out of that excitement, when the interviewer uh, caught me as I was going off the floor, and that's when it came out that we are on the map, we are staying on the map, not only in sport, but in everything. Now, what do you think of the way that Israelis, Israeli teams get treated when they travel to play internationally? Well, basically, it uh, divides up to two. Before Munich, uh, before 11 of our athletes were murdered in the 72 Olympics, and afterwards. So we're very security conscious. We travel with security. We have security with the countries that provide it from the countries that we play in. And in spite of all that, we're able to win the European Basketball Championship six times, more than 16 times in the Final Four and the Finals of Europe. And we're the first team that were outside of the United States that was honored and given an exhibition in the James Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame. And, uh, and I'm very happy to take that journey because uh, when I went to Israel to take up that challenge, it was a team, Maccabi Tel Aviv, that never got past the first round. And to have that journey to all the way go to winning the European Basketball Championships and to see in our team afterwards six times, another five times taking the championships and cutting that ribbon in the James Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame. It was a great moment and uh, I sleep very well at night because of those beautiful moments of uh, close to 50 years in Israel and we even uh, close by in Los Angeles and Sacramento have our first Israeli in the NBA, uh, Omri Caspi playing with the Sacramento Kings. Now, what do you think of the concept? The Israel baseball team who's playing in March, they have this issue themselves right now. What do you think? Well, of the baseball is relatively new in Israel. It, yeah. uh, we don't have the stadiums, we don't have the, the you know, the fields for it, and uh, the players uh, don't study or don't right. learn base baseball in, in uh, elementary or junior high or high schools or colleges. Yeah. So, so on the baseball team, they have Jewish Americans who play for on the Israeli team. And you as an American Jew, you play on the Israeli basketball team. Yeah. What do you think of having uh, non-Jewish Americans play on, on a, an Israeli national team? Well, we even have uh, Muslim Arabs that are playing in the Maccabiah games. Uh, they're Israeli citizens, and they're Israeli. They're the, uh, they can participate in the Jewish Olympics. Uh, but right. with uh, David Stern and the globalization, of basketball, uh, as well as I'm sure globalization of baseball, that you're playing it in Japan, you're playing it all over the world, that it's comprised of not one uh, a country holding only to their only citizens of that country. You know, so I guess it goes with the globalization of what's happening in the world today. 
in the Euro League, do they have many American players playing on European teams? We can have a Greek team or a Turkish team or an Italian team or even a Russian team that can have eight players that are not our Russian or Greek or Turkey. In Israel, we have six, seven players which are not Israelis that are playing, but that's the rules. The rules have opened up. And even in China, you have American ball players playing in China. And in uh, Russia, our Israeli coach, a uh, Jewish uh, American guy that uh, played basketball and coached in Israel. Uh, when we won our sixth European basketball championship, David Blatt, that went on to coach the Cleveland Cavaliers for a season and a half, uh, he was coaching the national Russian team in the Olympics. So I'm sure Khrushchev would probably turn in his grave if he knew they had a Jewish, American, Israeli coach. But that's the way the world is today. Speaking of an icon for Israelis, did you see American, uh, American only? Right? Yeah, new immigrants only. Yeah, you became a, would you say that you were kind of an icon for Israelis representing American Jews? Well, I, I was very fortunate uh, that many players that have come to Israel after me uh, sort of took my advice that feeling that Israel and they saw it when they came that Israel is the safest country in the world it's the most beautiful country that uh, they'll enjoy their social life their cultural life their life uh, amongst their friends and if they're married amongst their families and the players that have come to Israel whether they were Jewish or African American or Christian or even the team that beat us the other day had a Arab Muslim basketball player that actually helped uh, beat our team, Maccabi Tel Aviv. So uh, people don't realize, and I think this movie actually opens up their eyes to see what basketball is in Israel and how important it is to the spirit of the country, the mood of the country, and uh, you know how the faces of Israel are, the real faces. It's not only Americans, uh, I think, uh, even young ball players in colleges, not everyone can make the NBA. And when I speak in colleges, I tell some of these uh, college teams that these guys have the opportunity, if not in the NBA, they can go to China, they can go to Europe, and they can come to Israel and play in one of the 12 teams in our first league in Israel. I mean, it, it, not just for athletes, but for American Jews, yeah, or British Jews, or Australian, Irish, to come and, and is Israel a, a good place to build a future? Of course, I'm there almost 50 years. I have eight grandchildren there. <laughs> and I only plan to be in Israel one year, but I saw the life, the social life, the family life, the beautiful Mediterranean Sea from north to south, and uh, enjoy a full life in Israel. And as I say, the people in Israel are more afraid when I say I'm coming into the United States, I'm going to Chicago. They say, what, are you going to Chicago? You're crazy? They got, you got a murder a minute over there. <laughs> so no, Israel is a safe place. And I think anybody that goes there enjoys it very much.